sends his friends. I got past him for a moment where he just okay. ate our tape up. But anyway, uh, they're not there by happenstance. God has his man, Job. Satan has his, his friends. And the wager continues horizontal as it is vertical. That if you take away his props, and his faith will be destroyed, and he'll curse you. God, again, to reiterate, says, listen, you can do anything you can to him, but you can't kill him. And as Clinton learned and, and shared with me, uh, an aha moment, you can't touch his speech. <coughs> Everything else Satan messed with, but he didn't take his speech because he wanted him to curse God over him. Anyway, um, that's a powerful moment. Wow. Yeah. Wow. He, didn't, he didn't touch his wow. speech. Yeah. And it says to us today that your speech is important and you praise him uh, and give him the glory due to his name. All right, Russell, I think we're ready to roll. All right, tradition of the wicked. What's wrong with tradition? It's tradition. Yeah. <laughs> Back then it was okay, but now it's a different day. People think it can't be changed. Yeah, exactly. It's and always so, been this way. And that's what so far is going on. You ever had those comments? I raised my kid, my dad, mom, they, my dad and mom raised me, I'm raised me the same way. You can't. Yeah, yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. You can't. You can't take your belt off and be the child now. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> They're called children's services. <laughs> there was no children's services when we grew up. Missy, was there? Jeff? There was. There was, but. You, you know. know. Uh, I know. So, <laughs> <laughs> and then my mom had to learn. And her parents didn't know about it. <laughs> Me, if you make it to that phone, you can call. <laughs> <laughs> and you never went there anyway. <laughs> Tradition of the wicked, 4 through 29. So far as belief of the wicked. This is what he believed traditionally. And you can read the text. Let's go back and take a look because we haven't read it, uh, which I think now we can. Uh, and it's important for us to uh, go into that and take a look at what he uh, clearly believes. All right. Chapter 20, Job and the King James Version. Listen carefully. Then answered so far the Nehemiah and said, Therefore do my thoughts cause me to answer, and for this I make haste. Let me interject something. He interrupted Job. In 19, Job was not done talking. I did some research and studying and theologically. He, the reason he made haste, he cut Job off. Hmm. You ever had your friends cut you off when you ain't done this? Oh boy, let me get out of here, Missy. You're not done talking? Yeah, and listen, you don't see Job interrupting him. Wait a minute, you don't mean it. And hold on, I'm not done talking to you. Let me finish. Job is so eloquent and, and so patient, he doesn't even interrupt his friend. He says, let me make haste. He says, three, I have heard the check of my reproach, which you're reproof. That's where that came from. All right? Job corrects him because he's trying to correct him. Oh, boy, this is a mess. Sound like a soap opera. And the spirit of my understanding causeth me to answer. That's what he's blaming for. He's considering why he's answering. He says, here's the tradition. Knowest that knowest thou not of this old since man was placed upon earth. This has been since Adam, dude. And nothing's changed. You should know this. This is tradition. This is, what did you say? This is the way it's always been. That's what he's arguing right now. He's saying to him, to Job, watch this. That the triumphing of the wicked is sure. The joy of the hypocrite is for a moment. Look what he calls him. He call, he's talking to Job. You're wicked and you're a hypocrite. He just comes out swinging. And no syllables mixed either. That's what friends are for, right? Yeah. <laughs> I can hear who's that. Last night, you know, he was trying to build him up and help him out a little bit. You know, that's, he came all this distance to come see him and yeah. speak his word. And... But remember who sent him. They didn't come on their own volition. Satan sent them. And they ratcheted it up now, Chuck, even hotter than before. He said, listen, your victory is short. The joy of the hypocrites for a moment. Uh, his excellency or his haughtiness or prosperity mount up to believers, uh, excuse me, mount up to the heavens. His head reached into the clouds. In other words, Job, you're so full of yourself. This is your state. You're just like the wicked. Now, here's where the rubber meets the road. Some of these statements are not even, remember I told you they were untruthful? Did you ever see the wicked come out right away? Think about it for a moment. Wicked people live a long time. And their prosperity hardly ever runs out. Thank you. Think about it. This is why it's untruthful, it's misleading, and, and, and it's not in Job's case. So this, this is what he's saying. He says, listen, 
Uh, you shall, he shall perish like his own dung. And he goes real, I don't want to talk about it. nasty if I can use that word to be correct. Yeah, and you get the picture. He's calling Job that. I'm just going to tell it like it is, because it's in the Word. Yeah, it is. And, and so he says, listen, uh, in 7, He shall perish forever like his own thumb, that which have seen him shall say, where is he? He shall fly away as a dream, 8, and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. The eye of which uh, saw him shall see him no more. Neither shall his place any more behold him. His children shall seek to please the poor and his hands shall restore their goods. His bones are full of sin of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust. And I'm gonna stop there for a moment because that's as far as I believe we go. So anyway, watch this. Uh, he shall perish like his own dung. Those who see him shall see him and ask what happened to him. The question, listen, there's some wicked people. I know what happened to them. They're still here. So they don't always just perish. Why? Let me ask you this question, and we're going to try to blow this open real quick. Why do you think this is not true? What's your opinion of it? Why would it be misleading to you? Well, I would think that actually if you look at it, um, consider you know, what Job is offering him, which is the truth. Cut Job off, and then to, for lack of a better term, become indignant with his speech and his opinion of Job. In a roundabout way, he'd be speaking of himself mm. Mm. and not even have knowledge of it. Yeah. And Job is being patient because Job is like, Why would I even bother to waste my time? You're telling me about you, but you're saying it to me. Yeah. I don't have to listen to you. Maybe you should listen to yourself. Yeah, and one of the things you brought a good point is when I was studying the text. Uh, historians and theologians believe exactly that. Yeah, it's remarkable. The Spirit shared that with you. That they actually believe that so far, because he's so messed up. Let me go this route, Quentin, because you bring up a valid point. You ever look at someone and think ill will of them, and that's really who you are? Ill what? Ill will. With not good feelings yeah. towards them. And that's the reason, here's why your point is valid and why I say it's true. We just read Matthew 7 1. The same will be the same judgment will be measured by who you are. The same judgment that you pass on someone else. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Who am I to talk about him when I got my own problems that I'm not even dealing with? That's what you're exactly on the money. And so because of my my uh, how can I put it? My failures in my own life, I want to be above him, so I'm gonna talk about you like I do know you. And I'm better than you, when actually I'm the one who's short. I can use that to be correct. Thank you, Missy. I want to elevate myself, Chuck, above this person who I don't even know, but I know I'm better than them. And so I'll take the same problems I have. At least I don't do that. Yeah, exactly. That's the point we're raising. Yeah, when in fact you do do that. Yeah, so we got to be careful in how important this is. He says, uh, they shall fly away as a dream, shall not be found, and chased away as a vision of the night. Their eye that see him shall not see him no more, neither his place. Uh, anymore behind or behold him. So watch this. So we come to an end. He says his children shall seek to please the poor. In other words, they don't have anybody else, no one to help them. The poor is above who they are. And they'll beg from them who don't have this one. This is some deep stuff. They don't have anything and they'll never be satisfied is what Job is uh, so far saying to Job. So watch this. His hands shall restore their goods. Um, his bones are full of sin of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust. Some harsh stuff. Now, before we close, I got about 10 minutes. Um, Jesus makes a statement, and this is some deep stuff right here. He said, I no longer call you a servant, but a friend. You know what? It could be because a servant doesn't know what his father does, but the friends do. Yeah. I can't remember the you exact words. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, because a servant doesn't know what his father's business. He doesn't know his father's yeah. business. Yeah, but here's what Jesus does. As a friend of his, who is that? Uh, um, Israel Houghton. I am a friend of God. I am a friend. He calls 
But watch when you sing that. Because a friend, here we go, right to the beginning. Here's what a friend will do. Tell you about yourself. So when Jesus says, I no longer call you a servant, but I call you a friend. Here's how he tells us about ourselves. And so the reason why people, Chuck, don't like to preach about sin, because your friend, your bestest, is telling you you can't have that in your life. And here's what happens to some folks. Right back to our beginning. What happens to their state of mind? They become agitated. And then they want to reproof Jesus with his reproach. Oh, I feel like working the text now. But, he's, but you say he's your friend. And you're his friend. So why people don't want to read the word? Because the only reason, the only way you're going to know what your friend is saying to you is to pull up into the conversation that he wants to have with you. You see what I'm going? Yeah. And so I, I still hear my friend, I can't say their name, uh, another friend, who says, you know what? Jesus is offensive. Yeah, he is. To some. But if you're a friend of his, watch, this, watch where we're going. You will accept what he says to you. And I take it full value because my friend said it. I want to change the way I'm doing things. Oh, I feel like talking now. And so we don't become agitated or irritated. We become transformed. We should. And we should want to change. Here's why, Jeff. Because our friend is telling us this. Somebody said, Donald, how do you know Jesus is all through the pages of the, of the word? Right here. Mm -hmm. He is. It's all, this is all about him. Every word, every chapter, every dot and I, every cross team, this is all about Jesus. Right here. Mm -hmm. And so the only reason, the, and, and what I'm saying this, and I know Russell's recording, I'm glad he is, is for those who may watch this, is to get this understanding. Your friend is going to agitate you. I wish I'd go back to the beginning. He's going to disturb you. Tell you the truth. He's going to tell you the truth. What, who, who is that? Jack Nicholson? You can't handle it. Yeah. You won't handle Jack Nicholson moments, Tom Cruise. Hello, somebody. You're going to have to be able to accept the truth about who we are and who we're trying to become. The only person I know, Chuck, who wants to keep that from you is Satan, the father of lies. And I have a, a, a thing in my wallet. Watch this. And I keep it with me. Listen to this and I'm done. It says this. I would rather struggle in the truth than advance in a lie. I would. I'd rather struggle with someone telling me the truth than to try to advance my life with a lie. And so the, the reason why we're closing like this and I'm adamant and passionate is the fact that we continue to search the pages of what our friend wants to tell us. But here's the thing, Jeff. We can't fire back at Jesus like so far back at Joe. I thought about that this attitude. You know, my mind sometimes just goes to weird places like, what am I going to get? Guess what? You can't talk back to him. What was your point earlier in the lesson? As long as you're telling the truth. But don't be like so far just fly off at the handle. You know what, Jesus? You ain't really, then guess what? You ain't his friend. Grammatically, that's not correct. You're not his friend. But I like ain't. You just ain't his friend. <laughs> so that, yeah, that tickled me a little bit. So I should be able to accept what my friend, and I hear the hymn, What a friend we have in Jesus. That sounds, and I know I'm not on cue, Quentin, thank you. But <laughs> a joyful noise is just what it is. But people sing that and they stand up, but they don't want Jesus talking to them and trying to change their lives. Because they've got a pride problem. Yeah. It's not going to be easy. No, it's not. No, it's not. And you can talk back to God all you want. Just come in the truth. Because the lie will never get in his presence. So I, I held that a moment because I got excited. There's another ta-da moment uh, in another week or so as to why all this conversation is taking place. And you're going to be blown away by that. But a lot of time, but not told. Yeah, when you
you say he's your friend? Because listen, he calls you a friend. He said, I no longer call you a servant. This messed me up, Missy. I no longer call you a servant. Because a servant doesn't. But here, here's what friends he do. He does not let what his master is doing. Yeah. But I have called you friends. For all things I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. Yeah. Friends will do this. Hey, Henrietta. We need to talk. Sure, darling. What's up? What do you think about that? <laughs> and she'll give me her opinion. You know, you're right. Let's go this way. Let's do this. Jesus wants to have the same conversation with us. We just had friends over last night from New Life, and this is the very conversation we struggled with at the kitchen table. Wow. Yeah. We went round and round and round about what's happening in the world, and as Christians, what do you say? How do you, because we're told to judge certain things, mm -hmm. but how do you respond to what's going on? And it, it got a little heated. Because people are firm in what they believe, whether it's true or not, yeah. and so I think we come. <laughs> Thank to, you. Yeah. So I think we come yes. together to say, to speak in how Jesus has spoke to each one of us, so we can put it out there and think, okay, what is He trying to tell me yeah. in this moment? Yeah. It's crazy. It's all wow. what happened last night. Wow. <laughs> really. Things happen for a reason, too. You know, things happen for a reason. Like, we're set up, like, just when Jesus was, you know, sacrificed for us. All of those things set up for what happened. And I think it's the same thing. People have opinions and they don't have any idea what his end goal is. It might be to wipe out this whole area because it's going to stimulate more Christians to come down and take over like they did in, mm. in the Bible. Just yeah. random things happen for a reason. Yeah. Good that, happens from bad things. Yeah, that, let me, and Russell, you know what? Thank you, Missy and, and Darla and all of you. But let me ask you this. What do you think about the, if I can't use her name, the clerk in Kentucky? Who won't oh, break? I just missed that too. Yeah. <laughs> she should yes, get a different job. Too. I mean, yeah. unfortunately, I, I agree with her, but you that's your job. And church and state is separate, and we've all known that according to our constitution. And mm -hmm. whether you like it or not, maybe get a different job. Maybe you don't like digging holes because you feel like you're going, you know, different mm -hmm. direction. I don't know. But here's here's uh, it's tough. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough sticking point, and there are a lot of ins and outs to it. Uh, but here's what I believe uh, from, from what I've read and what I've shared uh, uh, personally with other people. First of all, the Supreme Court never passed the law. They don't. They don't. That's not their job to pass laws. Secondly, it's not a law. They just voted on a ruling. There's two different entities. Ruling and law is different. Only the Congress can make and pass laws. The Congress <clears throat> hasn't said anything. To validate the point, when it went to the, the, the local judge and he held her in contempt, it went to the appeals, to the appeals, next to the Supreme Court. Guess what the Supreme Court did? Do you know what they did with that? We don't deal with that. Oh, you don't? Then how can you rule? I'm done. How can you do this? Huh? Yeah, exactly. If you, if you already set a precedent and now a, a disagreement has come with your precedent, how come you can't be vo vocal or voiceful now that it's a problem with what you see what I'm doing? So therefore it's, it's but we know who runs this here. So it is something to uh, behold and uh, I can't share with you the end part because I'm going to say it to you so bad but I can't. There's a reason why uh, so far as having this conversation with Joe but if I tell you now, you might not want to come back. So, anyway, <laughs> you, know, you know how the cliffhangers are, this whole lot you got to come back next week. The whole, whole time, the whole time, the whole tuning in. It is yeah. kind of interesting that, you know, she has been divorced, what, three times, but she's so biblically, you know, and again, not the judge her, and she mm -hmm. shouldn't be judging others, because that's mm -hmm. not her job. Mm -hmm. When she signs her name to something, doesn't mean anything. She doesn't agree to it. Mm -hmm. uh, she's just doing her job, and it's, I don't think it has any reflection on if she's going to make it to heaven or not. I mean, mm -hmm. He'll know he's going to be the one to judge her. Yeah. But she made a valid point for all valid. the people that oh, yeah. are thinking yeah. it's okay, you know, yeah. we should love one another, we should accept others for yeah. everything. She made a valid point, oh, a yeah. biblical point. Oh, yeah. Everybody, yes. And, and even the Pope is kind of. Don't we need more of that today? I mean, yeah. What's yeah. mean? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, it's so political. So many people just sit back and let things happen and just keep rolling over yeah. you. Hey. Whether she was right or wrong, it's all about God and what she believed in, and, and so, yeah, it's they out there. They yeah. took that moment, and yeah. then here comes, oh, well, this is who she was. Yeah. This yeah. is what she used so to do. They tried to talk about her past. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it, 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 yeah. it, it, it takes away yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. 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 She just yeah. said, yeah. that's yeah. not looking at what she said. Yeah. Like We're looking at yeah. her past lives. Yeah. So you're talking about three to five years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Made a point. It's right now. We're, we're living a Joe yeah. moment. Because I think the word marriage is what hurts us most. That word marriage is not for a you know, a man and a man or a woman and a woman. It's for a man and a woman. It's according to the Bible. The word marriage alone is what hurts me the most. Because mm -hmm. if you want to say union or civil, whatever, I think that sounds better. I mean, not that it makes much difference. They're still living in the sin. they got to deal with their sins. But the word marriage is what hurts, I think, most Christians the most. Yeah. That word marriage because means more to us than I think they realize. And when they created that as the word, that's what messed me up I mean, the most. Satan is, is, is at his best again. Uh, it's no different than from the, in the garden where he, the God really said, that's the, that's the biggest <coughs> lie that has been told and still will ever live. Has God really said? Here's what God said. Marriage is between a man and a woman. We know what he said. That's what she's basing her oh, yeah. stance on. You two are not man and woman. I know I'm taping it and I don't care. Yeah. But it's the truth. It's between man and woman. Now what makes you think you can take Here's the thing, if you won't honor and worship God, why would you take his word marriage or union or, or togetherness and then use it for your own benefit if you don't believe who he is? It doesn't make sense. It's like someone who is, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Who don't believe in God, an atheist, and they're trying to prove there is a God. It doesn't, why would you do that? If you're an atheist, you say there is no God, let it settle. That's your belief. But don't try to prove there isn't a God if you know there isn't. You see what I'm saying? So it just makes sense to me that her stance, well taken, I like what you said, somebody finally spoke up and said something. And now the national attention is on, hey, what we know in this room and outside, it's wrong. It's not what God calls marriage. It shouldn't be on him. Now her position as far as her job is concerned, do you discriminate against her because of what she believes? She's got it, she's got it. that's why the Supreme Court threw it back. You can't discriminate on someone's race or religion or sex. You can't. Well, so, is she entitled to the same rights as they are? As they, exactly. Yeah. So by you putting her in jail, you're no better than you accuse her of being because basically, if you're saying that you have a right to love and live your life the way you want to, then she also has a right to discern who she wants That's to right. involve herself with yeah. and what she is inviting into her life. Yeah. Now, you could have took that woman and gave her another position where it was not her job to sign, but to put her in jail yeah. makes you know better than them mm -hmm. because she's standing by yeah. the word. Yeah. And so I think the, the ruling was to let the deputies do it, and now someone's saying those licenses aren't valid because she, but anyway, it's a good fight to have. Uh, in a good stance, and someone took time. We got to go. I want to get you on and, and, and moving. Father, in Jesus' name, we are so thankful uh, for the hour we shared with you and, and the word you've given us today. That an agitated response, our uh, God, uh, certainly before we speak, to think things through and to take our time and to digest uh, what eternal purpose you may have in our conversation. To our bestest friend, Jesus, we hear your words that you no longer call us a servant, but you call us friend. And so the words you speak to us, though they may agitate us, we accept them. And the agitation uh, is for a good purpose, that we would be uh, transformed into who you want us to be, more like you. So it's a good agitation, and our response is simply we accept what you say to us as a friend and wanting to change our lives. Be with these individuals, God, as they leave this place, but never from your presence. Uh, we thank Quentin for joining us, and for everyone whose home is represented Bless us individually and collectively. Give us travel mercy. We leave this place again, but never from your presence. Until we see each other again, God be with us. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Thank you all so much.